Ah, there comes a time of year with flowers, blooming with vibrant colors and beautiful scents. The animals awaken as the frost flees from the land. The trees start to regroup their lost leaves as their branches explode with green. The earth is a lush garden of splendor. But unfortunately, there is a catch. Pollen. This little yellow powder can cause people to have sneezing fits, a runny nose, watery eyes, rashes, dermatitis, and even asthma attacks. This allergy to pollen affects 1 in 5 people, causing thousands of Americans to miss work. In fact, this allergy, known as hay fever, is the fifth leading cause of chronic disease and costs the United States $700 million in lost productivity. One would think that with all our medical advances over the years, we would have figured out how to stop allergies. Maybe not necessarily something as minor as hay fever, but something that's a bit more dangerous. For example, foodborne allergies bring an estimated 30,000 people a year to the emergency room. Why aren't we trying to stop this? First, we need to understand how allergies work. An allergy is a disorder in the immune system, where the immune system tries to fight off harmless things in the environment as if it were harmful. A substance like pollen, dust, animal hair, or certain foods that cause these reactions are called allergens. Some allergens like bee stings, shellfish, nuts, or some medications can cause an anaphylactic shock. This is one of the most intense forms of an allergic reaction there is. What happens is when a bee stings you, the venom is recognized as a foreign invader to your body's immune system. Your immune system starts releasing immunoglobulin E antibodies to fight the allergen. The downside to this antibody is that it produces a lot of this organic compound called histamine. If it is in just one location, like if a bee stings your hand, you'll just get some swelling in that area. If, unfortunately for you, the allergen came in through your mouth, like when you eat nuts or shellfish, then your tongue, lips, and mouth will start to swell up with histamine. Your throat will start to constrict as the flesh around it swells and your blood vessels grow. This causes your blood pressure to immediately drop. If this goes untreated, you could die from this in a matter of minutes. Not hours, minutes. Thankfully, this sucky way to die isn't very common in the US. Only around 100 to maybe 200 people die each year due to this. Even so, an estimated 0.05 to 2% of the population of the United States is expected to have anaphylaxis at some point in their life. But wait, there is a cure to an anaphylactic shock, the EpiPen. This transportable syringe is full of a liquid called adrenaline, the same thing that makes mothers lift cars to save their babies or gives you an energy surge when something startles you. Did you feel that? That was some adrenaline going through your veins right now. That's what this thing injects into you. It will temporarily stop the anaphylactic shock until a doctor can get to you. These sort of allergies can get passed on from parent to child. Since allergies are a disorder in the immune system, they get passed on through genetics like hair color or height or some other things. If one of your parents is allergic, there is a 1 in 3 chance that you will have allergies. With two allergic parents, it's nearly a 4 in 5 chance that you will have allergies. No one is quite sure how an allergy develops. Some experts think that it happens when you come into contact with an allergen when you're weakened. For example, let's say you had the flu, and just as you finished getting rid of it, a bee stung you. Your immune system was still weak from its fight against the flu, so it thinks that the bee venom is more flu virus and attacks it as such. Your immune system then categorizes it in the same way it would the flu, and attacks it whenever it sees it. Unfortunately for you, you are now allergic to bee stings. Sometimes though, with age, allergies will simply disappear. Or, they may suddenly become way more intense. Or, they might just appear out of thin air. All these different variables make it very hard to study allergies. I have a question for you. What comes to your mind when you think of food allergies? Maybe peanuts? Peanuts are the most notorious allergy, affecting nearly 1.5 million people and pretty much everyone throughout the world knows at least one person that has this allergy. Even so, this is not the most common food allergy there is. The first place title holder is... Shellfish! This tasty yet vicious little creature is accountable for more than 5 million affected adults. In fact, only 0.01% of the United States children have a shellfish allergy, but 2% of American adults have it. 
both shellfish and peanuts can cause a wide range of reactions from something as mild as watery eyes to something as severe as anaphylaxis. Is that the most common allergy though? No, 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 no. The allergen that takes home the gold medal is... Pets! Your little animals sleeping in the corner affect 10% of America's population. Over 31 million people. So, will allergies ever just go away? Go extinct? Scientists think not. They have noticed that allergies are actually on the rise in urbanized areas. As of now, about 55% of America's population has tested positive for having a reaction to an allergen. That's over 170 million people. No one is sure what the sudden rise might be from. It may be from how much time we spend indoors, the heating of the earth causing pollen season to last longer, the new pollutants in the air from all our vehicles, or it might just be a coincidence. I'd like to thank all you guys for getting this channel up to over 4 million views and just about 2,700 subscribers. You guys are really awesome and I'm sorry about the whole copyright issue that happened. If you haven't done it already, check out my second channel, The Lyrics Master 88 for classic rock videos every Saturday. Be sure to subscribe, thousands others already have. Thanks again for all the support, and if you have any topics you'd like me to make a video on, leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.